difference. We are also grateful here in Firenze for all of your generous support, both for me and each other during a time of true sadness since Merkia's passing in April. And as we all have been doing over the last six months while trying to make sense of what happened, you have supported the Merkia Maria Gerard Fund, which we have established to cherish the memory of a life that burned intensely for what would today have been 40 years, but that sadly burned out all too soon. In addition to the projects already established and completed under Merkia's foundation, I'm pleased to introduce <clears throat> Daniela Murphy Correa, who will describe to you our next endeavor to ensure that Merkia's spirit survives in the memory and support of the living through his passion for art restoration. Merkia, I'm afraid we will just have to wait around another 40 years until I can throw that big party we planned, until I'm with you. But fasten your seatbelt, Miner. It's going to be a bumpy night, as usual when you're in party mode. Happy birthday, my Liebe Merkia. Hello everyone, I'm Daniela Murphy Correia, the president of the Associazione Bastioni. And I'm here because I want, you, I want to present you the first conservation and restoration project that we're going to undertake under the insignia of the Mirkia Maria Gerard Fund. Before I begin presenting the project, I just wanted to first of all thank all of you, the donors that have made this project po uh, possible. And secondly, I want to thank Luke from the bottom of my heart for the beautiful presentation he's sent to us. And as I was listening to this presentation, it came to mind that I wanted to do something. I want to give him a kiss. So let me see if I can just organize that. Bear with me a second and let me see what I can do about it. Right, so I managed to give the kiss. What I'd like to do now is uh, briefly introduce the Associazione Bastioni to you. We are a non-profit organization based in Florence since 2005. And the main aim of the association is to bridge conservators, information between conservators, understanding of materials and procedures. The association has a board of directors um, and you're going to be meeting them very soon. The first person you're going to meet is uh, Ana Gomez Prieto. She's a Spanish conservator of wall paintings and easel paintings, and she's the tesserary of the association. You'll then be meeting Chiara Piani, who is a ceramics and stone conservator, and she's the studio manager of the association. And then you'll be also meeting Federica Corsini, who is the secretary of the association, um, who's been one of the founders of the association together with myself and who as you soon see I lose my patience very quickly with her but I adore her to bits. The last person you're going to meet is Gian Lorenzo Pignatti Moreno. He's a books conservator, he's the vice president. Unfortunately he wasn't around when we were making this video so I'll be showing you a photograph about, of him. It's an interesting photograph and one which I think reflects a lot the openness of the Associazione Bastioni. Ciao, mi chiamo Anna e sono la tesoriera. Hello, my name is Chiara, I am studio manager. Allora, vai. Hello, I am Federica Corsini. I am the secretary. And as I said, our vice president, Gian Lorenzo Pignatti. Gian Lorenzo, I hope you get too, don't get too angry with us. <laughs> so 
so let me talk to you about the project, the conservation project we are planning to undertake under the insignia of the Mirkia Maria Gerard Fund. So one of the very first things I did when we knew we had a bit of funds to undertake a conservation project was to talk to this wonderful, wonderful man. This man is called Matteo Ceriana. He's an Italian art historian based here in Florence. And as you can see by his beautiful face, he's a very wise, cultured and intelligent man. And when I explained to him what the fund was, why it was constituted, he asked me to give him a bit of time to think about it, which he did, and summer went by. When September came, um, I got in contact with him again, and he presented me to another very intelligent, wise man, Daniele Rapino, who is another art historian who works for the superintendency of Florence. So let me briefly explain what the superintendency is. The superintendency is a facility chartered by the Ministry of Culture, the Italian Ministry of Culture, and each region of Italy has its own superintendencies. These buildings are inhabited by art historians and architects whose sole mission is to take care of Italian national heritage. Florence itself as a city is divided in a sort of grid and in each grid you have an art historian and an architect who is in charge of that specific territory. Daniele Rapino, um, when uh, Matteo Cerriana and I asked him for help, he also sat and thought about it for a while, together with Matteo, there was a moment of silence, and then with these wonderful luminous eyes that he has, he said, Daniela, I have an idea. The idea is linked with the church of Il Carmine, some of you might be familiar with the Church of El Carmine because it's where the very famous Brancacci Chapel is housed. Santa Maria Novella was built in 1268 to house a convent for the Carmelite Order, an order which still exists today. As you can see by this panora panoramic view that I'm giving you, the church is nestled in a small square in the Oltriarno, on the other side of the river. A borough known as San Frediano and historically renowned for being an area where all the artisans of Florence work in. The facade of the church, as you can see, is, ex is extremely bare, but that's typical of Renaissance church facades, especially in Florence. Most of them are actually unfinished. The two examples we have in Florence of facades that were finished at the time they were built is San Miniato, and Santa Maria Novella. Nevertheless, inside La Chiesa del Carmine, we have a treasure hove of Renaissance artworks. Painters of the caliber of Masolino, Masaccio, Filippino Lippi worked in there. In 1771, there was a huge fire. The fire originated in the central nave of the church and basically destroyed most of the panel paintings that decorated the flanks of the, of the nave. And this is where our conservation project comes in. One of the paintings we're going to be restoring is one of the very few 17th century panel paintings that, were not that was not destroyed during the fire. We are also going to be working on another painting, a 19th century painting, purposefully painted to replace the original burnt panel painting. As you can see by this map, the second chapel is the chapel that houses the panel painting we're going to be working on. The chapel is known as Cappella Martellini, and the panel painting represents the death of St. Albert. It was executed in 1631 by a Florentine painter called Bernardino Monaldi. Not a very well-known Florentine painter, but nevertheless a very good painter. A pupil of Pocetti, who for sure was a very well-known painter, and who I'm, I'm certain that many of you that have come to visit Florence will have seen many of his art. What we're looking at is the funeral of St. Albert. It would appear, by reading certain old documents and treaties, that the panel painting is signed by the painter and that some of these portraits we see are portraits of people that did exist at the time in Florence. So it's going to be very exciting for us not only to intervene on the painting itself, but also to uncover and discover the iconography and the story behind it. This is another panel painting executed by Monaldi himself which is located in a church outside Florence in a place called Signa. As you can see, the panel painting was recently restored and you can see the wonderful explosion of color that derives from the cleaning process.
I'm showing this painting to you so that you can get an idea of what we are expecting to find under sentry layers of soot and black lamp. And this is the second painting we'll be working on. As you can see, it's located in the third chapel to the left-hand side of the church. The painter is a man called Francesco Gambacciani, another painter which isn't too well known in Florence, but his work is absolutely exquisite. As you can see, or maybe not see by this photograph, the painting represents a nativity scene. I like the idea that we're going to be working on a painting that represents a death, and a painting that represents a birth. It draws a wonderful circle of continuity, the continuity of life. But coming back to this painting, as you can see, this painting is also almost illegible. It wasn't in the fire, as it was painted after the fire. But years and years of environmental dust and contamination coming from cars, Piazza del Carmine used to be a big car park, has rendered the painter today almost illegible. There are a few structural problems with this canvas. You can't see it very clearly in this photograph, but there are quite a few holes in this canvas, which means that we will be intervening on a structural level as well as on an aesthetical level. I don't have other examples at the moment of paintings executed by this painter, though I will find them and show them to you. But what I do have is a wonderful self-portrait of him. Here he is. Francesco Gambaccini, pittore e decoratore fiorentino. Coming face to face with the artist of the work we're going to be working on is extremely exciting. It creates a sort of intimacy, a sense of familiarity, as though if I've known him for a long time. I hope he feels the same about us, and I hope he'll feel proud of the work we're planning to do on his own work. And now I want to present you the team of conservators that are going to be working on the panel painting. The first conservator is Caterina Canetti, a Venetian conservator specialised in easel paintings and panel paintings. And this is Alberto Di Muccio, a conservator specialised in wood. As you can see, we already have organised the team of conservators that are going to be working on the panel painting. We still have to organise the team that will be working on the easel painting. Our aim is to begin work in November and December. This is very exciting for us and I hope it will be also for you. We are planning to post a series of videos as work proceeds, probably one every two weeks. So please, if you like them and you want to follow us, please subscribe or press like underneath. We also have a comment section, so if you'd like to leave comments, get in contact with us, please feel free to do so. There are a series of links also underneath the video that will take you to the website of the Associazione Bastioni and to the website of the Mirkia Maria Gerard Fund. If any of you want to get in contact with us, please feel free to do so. And if any of you come to Florence, come and knock on the Church of Santa Maria del Carmine and come and visit us on site. The last thing I'd like to say is Mirkia, happy birthday. You're greatly missed. Un bacio. Ciao ciao.